In this lesson, we're going to discuss how to do a roughing operation using a right hand knife tool on a lathe. The easiest way to do this is using a roughing cycle, a G71. I'll go into depth on how that works and there'll be handouts after the lesson so you can use it as a reference. Our first block of program uses the end number so we can search for the rough turn operation in the program later on. Now these end numbers, when I first started programming um, a long time ago with CNC machines, we used an end number for each line. Now it's widely just used for a search number at the beginning of each section of program. So we can jump into the program easily just by typing in the end number and the down arrow on the FANUC controls. And that searches straight to our line we need to go to. Next we have an operator's note so we know what we're doing in the program. So I've just put rough turn. We can put the tool details here. Uh, some people like to put in a lot of information about the tool in, but I put that at the beginning of the program so we can reference that while we're setting the machine. I don't find there's a need to add it in the program further down. Our first command on the next block is G54, which tells the machine that we're calling upon a datum that we've already set when we set the machine up. As standard practice, the front of the job is Z0 on this case. Some people use the parting off um, position for the datum position, but I always use the front face. That way, if we're using a Z minus value, we know we're cutting material and that we're into the material. The G40 cancels any cutter compensation from previous operations. We will be using cutter compensation in this operation, but this cancels it from before if it's still live. Our roughing tool is in position one on our turret. So we call position one by using T01. And then we tell it our offset is also one. So first command is T0101, tool one, offset one. And then we use MO6 to tell the machine to do a tool change. This is where this turret will rotate to the main tool that we wish to use is in position to cut. The G50 command is a speed clamp. What this means is the machine will not go above 2,500 RPM and the G50 tells the machine its maximum RPM cannot go above 2,500 revs per minute. The reason we use the speed clamp is because on this operation we're going to be using constant surface cutting speed. What this means is as the material gets smaller the surface on the diameter would be going slower so the machine compensates for this by speeding up the spindle so as the material touches the tool it's at a constant speed no matter what the diameter of the job. The G code for this is G96 which is the code for constant surface cutting speed. Following the G96 we add our surface speed in this case we used S280. The MO3 turns on the direction of the spindle in a clockwise motion. Now it's time to bring our tool into the position to start cutting. So we use our rapid command G00. I'm bringing it into X 70 millimeters. We're assuming the billet of the material is 60 millimeters as on the drawing. Our Z position is five millimeters clear from the front of the job. And we use MO8, which is our coolant on command. I like to approach the job using a feed rate command. So we use G01. I do this so we have more control over the tool using the feed overwrite knob on the controls of the machine. That way, if something is wrong, we have plenty of time to react and stop it before a collision. I'm bringing the tool in at point one of the data position. This is so we can clean up the front face of the component, leaving on point one of a millimeter for our finishing operation. I'm using a feed rate of 0 0.01 millimeters per revolution for this. Now we face off the front of the component. I'll go 0 0.02 past the center line of the component just to clean up any pips that may be left over. This assumes the tool is perfectly set on center height, which is a must, otherwise you will leave a pip, which could affect the center drill later on when we drill a hole in the face. I've slowed the feed rate down to 0 0.05 in this case. As the tool approaches the center line, the spindle will speed up to its maximum RPM of 2,500 revs per minute because we have surface cutting speed on. This is why we set a speed clamp, otherwise the machine will attempt to go up to an infinite speed. Using G00, we now rapid our tool away to a safe position before we start our roughing cycle. The next two blocks of code is where we define our roughing cycle using G71. There's a lot of information in this section, 
So let's make that larger and go over it part by part. This slide is available for download. When I was first learning CNC programming, I kept something very similar to this in my toolbox. It's a really good reference guide, so I recommend printing it out and keeping it in your notes. The G71 is our diameter roughing cycle G-code. This tells the machine that we're going to be cutting with a roughing cycle. The U1.0, that means the depth of cut per each cut. In this case, we're cutting one millimeter. We follow that with the R value, which is how much we retract the tool from the material after each roughing pass. Now the following line is where we give it some information about where our subroutine is. Our subroutine would be the profile of the part. I'll go into more detail with that when we go back to the main program. So again, we use the G71 command. Our P100Q100 is our first line and our last line of the subroutine. We designate this in the main program using an N number, like our search number at the beginning of the block. So for example, rather than using N1 for our search number, we use N100, N200 to tell the machine the part of the program where the roughing subroutine lies. This will become more clear when we go back into the main program. Now our next value is a U value again. This time it doesn't mean depth of cut. This is where it can get confusing with CNC programming. It means the amount left on for finishing in X. So basically, as we cut the profile, it will leave 0.02 of a millimeter on the material so we can come in with a finishing tool and clean up the job afterwards. So this is our finish allowance. The W command is the same, but for our Z direction. This is how much it leaves on the face of the job as it profiles so we can clean up the faces with our finishing tool on the following operation. And to finish off this block, we define a feed rate using an F value. In this case, we're cutting at 0.2 of a millimeter per revolution. Now we can start our subroutine. This is defined by the N100 value. It can be any N number you like. We tend to use three digit number. That way it doesn't get confused with our search N number we use at the beginning of each parcel of program. If we wish to use more subroutines, it gives us more options. So in this case, I've used N100. The P100 command that we mentioned just now on the line above, this points to the N100 number at the beginning of our subroutine. We can give this any value. It could just as easily be an N530 and P530 would point to it. Using a rapid command, we come in to X 19 millimeters this is one millimeter below the diameter that we wish to start cutting. This is because we have a 45 degree chamfer that's one millimeter deep on the front of the part. I haven't labeled that with dimensions for clarity so everything is more visible on the drawing. The GO1 command is our feed rate command and we turn on the cut compensation using G42. Now we bring the Z in to the face of the part, the Z00. Since we have a GO1 command, I've added the feed rate of F0.2 millimeters per revolution. Here we bring our tool to the end of the 45 degree chamfer. We do that by bringing the tool up to 20 millimeters, which is the diameter we wish to cut, and with a Z minus 0.5 millimeters. This is the depth of the chamfer. I go into more detail discussing the maths and the calculations behind cutting chamfers on the face of the part in the boring operation lesson. In this block, we move our tool 20 millimeters towards the chuck using Z minus 20. This takes our cutter to the start point of our angle. We don't need to know the exact angle of this part of the program. We have our start diameter and our finish diameter and also the length of the angle. So we have all the information we need to be able to program this part. Our X dimension is 40 millimeters and our Z dimension is minus 30, as we can see from the drawing. There are many ways to program a radius on a CNC machine. We could use G02, G03 with an I and K value. Um, we could use G02 with an R value, for example. But in this case, we're simply defining the Z length, then adding the radius value with a comma preceding it. So this line reads Z minus 65, comma, 
our five point knot. Here we program our tool to come up to the size of the billet at x 60 millimeters. And that brings us to the end of our subroutine. So using the end number N200, as we spoke about on the G71 line when we had the values P100, Q200, the Q200 references this number, the N200. Again, it can be any three digit number you like. In this case, I've used 200 to define it. The G40 turns off cutter compensation and the X value brings our tool up away from the diameter of the job. I also wrapped the tool five millimeters off the face of the job. I've programmed this move using a feed rate as we're still under G01. I've used a feed rate of 200 millimeters per revolution. This is a very fast feed rate and will take the machine up to almost rapid speed, but it's a lot more controllable by using the feed override switch on the front of the machine controls. This move can also be done using a G00 rapid command instead of a feed rate. As in the other lessons, we now tell the machine to use the machine dating position and not our work shift dating position by defining G53. Now we can use X0, which takes the machine to the machine zero point, and our Z dimension is our safe working distance in between the two spindles. Here we can also turn off the coolant by using the MO9. Now is a good time to turn off the spindle, so we use an MO5 command to stop the spindle. Since we turned on constant surface cutting speed at the beginning of this section, it's best that we turn it off. That way we have no surprises if we jump into the program and find constant surface cutting speed is still active. So we turn it off with G97. And finally, an MO1 optional stop, just so we can stop the program at this point if we need to. Thank you for watching this lesson. In this lesson, we covered a full roughing cycle on a CNC lathe and how to use subroutines within the program and how to define them. In our next lesson, we'll be covering a finishing cut using a finishing cycle. We will be calling upon this subroutine again without having to do too much more programming for our finishing cycle since the profile has already been programmed. Watch the next lesson to see how that's done.